Nonconformity Rebellion against societal norms is sometimes just and called for. At other times, the approach is naive and immature. All depends on the circumstances. Knowing when and when not to apply nonconformist thought and action to right or wrong requires discrimination. That is the problem, of course. People always think they know best, but who really does? Some reformers are misguided from the start, resulting only in more detriment and disarray. And so the nonconformist's cause largely gets a bad rap, owing to such fool's errands. Yet the role of the nonconformist is essential on both a personal and collective level. The nonconformist on the right side of history is a righteous warrior. Societies are not always correct. Rulers are not always right. Governing bodies are rife with corruption. Laws enacted show favoritism and are therefore unjust. We need mavericks to rail against these misappropriations and misdeeds. Nothing sours the spirit like injustice. The fact is, the world is full of it. The offense of injustice is rampant as a plague, sickening with disharmony wherever it spreads. It is not easy to go against the grain, to antagonize the established. Nevertheless, some are built for it. These retrograde operators tread a perilous path, standing up to a mighty status quo. We are hard on our whistleblowers and treat them as sordid and unsavory characters, at least until we embrace them. Some never know any mercy for a noble service rendered, and that is their gamble. Nonconformity always upsets the balance of power, resulting in inconvenience and upheaval, even states of chaos at times. But that condition is temporary. It is right to dismantle a thing when the cumulative damage inflicted outweighs its good. That thing was designed either in ignorance of the ramifications to come or with a lack of principles to begin with. Its architecture is unsound, and it must come down. So many structures now in place assail the many, an advantage but a few. This is a common woe. There is much to fix, and nonconformity serves as a powerful tool affecting real change. It is not the only tool at our disposal, certainly not the delicate hand of diplomacy but sometimes it is the only thing left on the table. A contrarian is a rebel merely for rebellion's sake. That is counterproductive. Do not be that. A rebel in misalignment with truth may become a terrorist. Do not be that. The freedom fighter is only legitimate if they fight for a more universal equality not for the rights of their own to then take precedence over that of their oppressors. This merely flips the script and reignites a vicious cycle of enmity. Karmic law will always deal oppressors their own heavy hand in due time. These times, right now, these are remarkably turbulent times, fraught with danger. In such a moment, when things have gone so awry, morality itself seems the unconventional approach. To make matters worse, recent rebellions of historical note have been totally misguided. Misinformation abounds, leading to fires which should have never been lit. In a time of great need, precious resources are being squandered, as we must divide our attention to deal with petty things. Yet pointless fires must be quelled 
all the same. The orthodoxy so often goes rotten, though. Stagnancy corrupts. Comfort, even security, these things can corrupt. Small-minded selfishness protects only the narrow radius, the ruling echelon, and not a broader world. Hierarchy is good, and hierarchy is certainly bad. All that is unfair acts as a potent toxin on our psychic health, leading to cynicism and feelings of futility. We find ourselves in need of course correction, in need of the unorthodoxy, to lead us back to center. Nonconformists can employ the methods of peaceful resistance, as did Gandhi and his American protege, Martin Luther King. These two, of course, are rare masters. Their results were extraordinary. History marvels at these men. Their minds were strong and able to move many. Rarely are nonconformists so formidable, even if behind an equally noble cause. What is interesting is that we only call them nonconformists, a term associated with radicals, because they were at odds with unjust circumstances within their societies at large. They were, in fact, the conventional ones because the right way was with them. In the seismic reforms they brought, yes, also came turbulence, but the cause was just. These are the righteous warriors, and their tactics demonstrate an elevated means to bring about change. Nonconformity is not always an affront or confrontational. It can be subtle, and in regard to anything at all. It is not the only thing that leads to our advancement. Conformity does as well. Please understand, conformity can work just fine if aligned with truth. If it is not, nonconformity then serves us. Sometimes only the antidote can shatter the lie. Nonconformists are our originals. They are our innovators, our trailblazers, our pioneers, our trendsetters. Bravery is a necessary prerequisite. Cowardice cannot bring forth a nonconformist. Their way is one of considerable risk. Those who don't want to ruffle any feathers cannot propel us forward as a people. They're not bad because of this. They are our preservers and our maintainers, the silent majority. They too play an important role. The ones who don't want their feathers ruffled at any cost, they are the danger. They are the more forceful element within the status quo, the entrenched defenders of outmoded principles. They actively hold all of us back, while callously maintaining their profitable falsehoods. Dare to be different if you have it in you. This is the fast track to progress. Set wise parameters for yourself and try to resist recklessness. One issue with the nonconformist temperament is they tend toward haste. This impulsive streak can lead to an undisciplined lack of control. This is self-defeating to your cause. You will lose respect. You will undermine yourself. Effective nonconformity must have a sound foundation and approach. As per the principle of duality, nonconformists can also be false. They can cast darkness over the light. Discrimination must be in your corner. Otherwise, you are the tyrant and criminal, not a solution to our problems. Do not go the way of anarchy. If you have the audacity to tear a thing down, be sure and have the resolve to then build it back better. 
the wrecking ball is destructive, to then be constructive. Improve our lot with your innovative thinking. Let's improve conditions. Let's right our wrongs. Let's even right their wrongs. And do not concern yourself with the credit. Let's accelerate positive change.